now the next thing we're going to discuss is the connection between the determinants and the uh, elementary row operations. It's uh, I get I get the feeling that some of you know about this. Last time some of you asked me what, what whether you can do row reduction or something. Today I will give you like a formal look of it, and then I'll do one example where this we can use this 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 properties. So I'll, I'll I'll put it this way. So I start with the matrix, matrix A, and I haven't used this kind of notations before, but it's quite like reasonable to do it this way. Matrix, like a, in some informal way, it depends on its rows, right? It's like a, you, may, you may think of a matrix as a sort of a function of rows. So, and I will this time I will explicitly make this obvious this dependence of matrix on its rows. So that's what I will do. I put the A and I put the brackets all the rows this matrix might possibly have. So it's the matrix of n times n square matrix because determinants are only relevant in the square matrix context. Uh, so he, this is this is my way to say, basically, it's just my way to say that matrix A has rows from R1 to Rn. And I also, for the sake of the what will follow, for the sake of what will follow, I just also single out two, in, uh, two middle rows. One of them I called R sub J, and the other one is R sub K. Uh, so look what happens. Now, for instance, if I look at the the main main elementary the first and the like the principal row operations we have which is called row reduction in these formal terms the in these formal terms row reduction looks like this look at this if b is taken from a or is obtained from a as a row reduction it will be looking like this all of the rows of your matrix stay the same except for the jth row which is the original jth row plus the scalar multiple of kth row that's a formal way how we can present the row reduction elementary operation. I never did it this way, but it's, it's a very nice way to do things. It's very clear what's happening here. I'm taking the jth row and replacing it with j plus lambda k. Lambda obviously here is a, con is a scalar. Depending on the con in general, of course, we can think of a complex scalar, although most of the time you operate only with real numbers. But in principle, it can be, it can, it can be a complex number. Now, what happens with the determinants? The connection of the determinants with this particular row operation expressed by this simple identity. It says determinant of this B will be determinant of the same A. So all I just said, all I just opened for you so far just says one little thing to you. If you do row reduction on the matrix, determinant will not change. This is just a formal representation of this little simple statement. Row reduction on the matrix doesn't change the determinant of that matrix. Now, the second row operation which you use often, which is the scaling of a row with some constant. Again, uh, I didn't specify it, but my lambda, of course, in general, it's a complex number. Uh, so, again, if I want to present this row operation formally, the result of, this, of such row operation will be, look at this. Uh, I keep all of the rows. The jth one is get scaled. Well, I didn't even open the k one. Uh, under such elementary row operations, so when I scale one single row, you see I just scale the original with the constant lambda. The constant here, of course, uh, remember, it must be non-zero. Otherwise, it's no longer the elementary row operation. Now, what happens with the determinant in this case? It's given by this identity. The determinant of the result will be scalar multiple of the original determinant with the same scalar. Now, the final row, row operation which you use often is the row swap. In the formal language, row swap, if I write this row swap in the formal language, look what I will do. I just, again, I use my, this, this, this notation. And this time, you see the kth P is in the, in the place of J row, and J P is in the place of K row. That's a typical row swap. When you do a row swap, the determinant, the change of the determinant is expressed by this identity. So the determinant will change its sign to the opposite one. When you swap the row, sign changes. And that this is all as simple as this. That's, that's how the, what's the, that this is the connection between the determinants and the elementary row operations. There are a few things which I needed here to complete the whole picture. Actually, one thing which is needed here to complete the whole picture. How do we compute the determinant of the row echelon form? And that's the, I think that's the part four here, which says this. Uh, 
if A is in the row echelon form, then determinant of A is a product of the diagonal entries. These four points it just give you the complete picture, complete connection between the determinants and the elementary row operations. The last one is actually an important one. For instance, you can from that you can easily see without doing any uh, any row decompositions as we did last time. For instance, the identity matrix will have determinant equal identity matrix will have determinant equal one because it's a row identity matrix. It's a very very simple row echelon form. We just take the product of the diagonal entries. In fact, in fact, probably now you will realize where this informal reference which I used the first time we looked at the row echelon form, the informal reference which I call the triangular shape comes from because for the rectangular, sorry, for the square matrix, for the square matrix, so row echelon form, it's a very typical triangle. Everything on the diagonal is zero. Above the diagonal is the content of your matrix. So you can actually say this thing alternatively like this. If you have triangular, sh triangular shaped matrix, so the matrix with zeros under the diagonal, the determinant of such matrix is a product of the diagonal entries. Okay, uh, there are three simple consequences of these four main points. Uh, it's they are like you can see you can see them easily from these four, but they remembering them on their own is helpful, especially when you do the computer because it will save some time for you. Uh, and here they are. I'll just lift it up a little bit. I'll call them five. I, I, mar I mark them with the asterisk. It just like this is just in, in recognition that this is actually not the independent properties that they are actually consequences of these four first four. Uh, the, first, the first one, the first consequence says this. If I have a determinant of a matrix which has a zero row, the determinant of that will be zero. No matter how, how complex the structure of the matrix is, if the matrix has a zero row, the determinant of that will inevitably be zero. How do you think we can see this from, from these properties, from this form? Do you see the log logical imp uh, implication from this four that the zero row will imply zero determinant? Huh? Either two or four. four. I'm not sure about four, but two, yes, two, probably the right thing to, 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 to mention here. How do you see it from two? Uh, you're saying like if I have any matrix, or like any matrix, and I multiply the row with zeros, this, by this property, it will be the same as the determinant of the original multiplied by zero. Yeah, actually, that's, that's an acceptable way to reason it, actually. Yeah, I agree. Good. One. Thanks. All right. What about the, this consequence, which says if I have a determinant like this, it's a determinant which has two identical rows, you see? I put vector x and vector x in the position of the jth row and the position of the kth row. In this case, determinant also will be zero. How we can see that? Yes, thank you. Thank you for choosing the right word. Yes, you can row reduce it by doing something like this. You can row reduce one of the rows. You can just subtract this row from this one, and you end up with a zero here, and then you refer to the property number five for size. What if I have the determinant of the matrix, which is lambda A? What do you think will be the result of that? Thank you. The correct answer will be lambda to the power of which power? N, which is, what is N? The size of the matrix. And the reason for that is that when you multiply the matrix, the way we multiply matrix with a scalar, we multiply every row with that scalar. So you have to apply your two, property two, n times. You have to apply it to every single row. So the result, in fact, will be lambda to the power n times determinant of a. It's, simp it's a simple observation, but surprisingly, some of you make this mistake very often. Don't confuse these two things. You may, you may multiply one row with the scalar, but this has nothing to do with the matrix scalar multiplication. Matrix scalar multiplication is when you multiply every entry of the matrix with the scalar. 